Straight on the heels of my last video where I said I wanna do more builds and screw it, I like building computers and that's what we're gonna do. So when Asus reached out to us last month and said, hey, are you interested in building a Gundam themed PC? I started thinking to myself, what kind of mods could I do to make it Gundam themed? And then basically it was like, no, we have an entire plethora of Gundam themed parts here. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Friendly reminder, they are building something across the alley from us and they have a table saw set up out there. You might hear random buzz saw sounds. I can't do anything about it. We're just gonna move on and you might, have, might not even hear it. I might just sound completely crazy. But anyway, this is not the first time that uh, we've seen some Gundam themed parts, but this is gonna be the first time we've seen like an entire, like from the monitor to the mouse pad to the keyboard, heck, even to the router. We have Gundam themed products. We're actually, I think, most excited about the router considering ours is failing. <laughs> it's an old Nighthawk that's just like, overheats and sees it, has seen its last days, I think. It continues to drop packets on us because it starts to shut down and Phil goes, all right, hold on, I'm gonna go reset the router. And he comes out here, he's like, okay, we should be on in a couple minutes. And maybe this will stop that from having to happen. But we're gonna kind of take a tour of the parts that were sent here. We're gonna build the computer, obviously. But we even have a, we'll start with the monitor right here because this is what's for front and center here. This is a 170 hertz WQHD panel. It's the RG Strix XG279 Gundam Edition, obviously. It's a one millisecond gray to gray. Uh, it's got an Aura Sync, obviously. Uh, Built-in NVIDIA G-Sync. The thing about theme systems, it's oftentimes you can theme your tower, but pulling it into the peripherals, including your monitor, is usually the thing that's lacking. You'll have your tower, which is all custom modded or painted or whatever, and then it just doesn't carry over into the rest of your stuff. So that's what's really awesome about this whole Gundam theme uh, edition from Asus. So we also have right here, this is the uh, sheath. It's basically a gaming mat and you can see it's got the granddaddy sitting right there. So you'll notice that most of the theme on this is based specifically off this particular Gundam. He's kind of like the one that started it all pretty much. We've got our mouse pad right here. We've got the Strix Scope TKL keyboard right here, which is a smaller keyboard. So we'll take a look at that as well. We have the uh, Strix Impact 2 Gundam Edition gaming mouse. And I think Nick's gonna probably steal these from me, I can already tell. This is the ROG Delta Gundam LTD headset. So there's your peripherals right there. This is what's gonna tie all of your Gundam themes into the rest of the system. So let me make a little room here so we can start looking at the stuff that's really cool. So this is the ROG Strix Helios. This is a giant tower that is obviously Gundam themed. We'll, we'll kind of save this for an unboxing here in a moment. When we start the build, it's pretty heavy too, actually. We've got our RTX 3080 Gundam Edition graphics card right here. Now, obviously the 3080 Ti has just launched. This is the standard 3080 version of the Gundam, but it's got obviously accent bits and stuff on there that are going to tie into this build, carrying it through to the Z590 Gundam Edition motherboard. This one I might be able to, nope, everything's sealed. I'm gonna need a knife. So we got our motherboard and we've got our power supply right here. Now the cool thing about the power supply is this magic knife just appeared out of nowhere. The cool thing about the power supply is the fact that you'll see these, these themed power supplies as well, uh, but then the cables are just basic cables. However, that's not the case for this guy. This one has fully white individually sleeved cables right here. So anything that shows, look at this, even the zip ties and the uh, Velcro straps are white. Even the little bag that has our cables in it is white. Too bad there's no white power plug, but whatever, that's fine. So here are the cables. Check that out. White, individually sleeved cables for the main power components and then for the SATA and, and stuff. These are just white uh, plastic sheathing on there basically, but we even have white connectors on there. So we're carrying that all the way through. And then as you can see with the power supply, like how this power supply is the first thing I unbox, check that out. That looks really nice, especially with the white and just the silver on there. So it's not like really overbearing. So this 850 watt power supply, it's clearly enough for our 3080. Speaking of 3080, let's go ahead and unbox that next because we all know it's already a unicorn just having a 3080, but then having a special edition one like this, it's obviously gonna be a centerpiece of this build, but I wanna see how the, uh, the motherboard and the graphics card look. It's funny, it, it looks like it just popped right out of the anime, honestly. Like even the little CPU cover has him like printed on there. So as you can see right here, we've got the model number of the Gundam right here was RK78-2 Gundam. It's also right there, that's a very military looking theme. I like the brushed aluminum on here. And then I, it's kind of sad that they imprinted uh, him right there because um, you have to take that cover off obviously, but 
The only downside about this is you're not gonna see it. Like even on the backside of, of most cases, you're not gonna see that. <laughs> Look at those Strix, even the Strix right there is the yellow, red, and blue. And it's like all the little details on the packaging even for the Gundam Edition stuff. So basically the cooler is the exact same cooler you would find on the Strix Edition graphics card, only it's got the color scheme that carries through to the Gundam Edition. So you can see looking at the face of it right there. This is a big boy. <laughs> Nick's face. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see on the back plate, it carries it through right there. It's a plastic back plate. Curious how that does for temperatures. Anyway, good. yeah, it's a very, it's, it's pretty awesome. So this is the uh, RT8X882U. Uh, it is an AX5400 Wi-Fi 6 router. Dude, look at the <laughs> look at the router. Dude, that looks sick. <laughs> it looks like the chest plate. <laughs> Jay's two mobile suits. <laughs> How am I gonna do this? <laughs> Here's the reveal. I can't see it yet. Ooh, look at the glass in the front. It's all Gundam guy in there. <laughs> all right, so this is the Helios. Uh, we've got three intake fans on the front, one exhaust fan on the back, nothing on the top. So we're gonna want to play around with that a little bit. Quick, easy, removable filter. Uh, check this out though. They've got this built-in support for your graphics card. So there's a rail system right here, and then you can tighten up that screw, place that underneath your graphics card, and then you can remove your sag. So that's pretty neat. Not to mention it obviously adds to the mechanical feel of it. Got a little window down here, so we'll be able to see the uh, Gundam theme emboss that's on the side of the uh, power supply. And then as you can see on the front, you've got this really pretty Brushed, this is real brushed aluminum, by the way. It's not a faux brush like some brands do. But you can see right here, we've got the uh, RX78-2 right here on the front of the case. And so I'm assuming there's gonna be LED lights in here that light up. Then you've got this little tag right here that's also got the model number on there, which is pretty neat. And then as you can see on the top, we've got these straps that make it so that it's easy for you to pick it up and move around. So those actually tie right into the structure itself. So if you need to move your case around, you literally do it like that, making it a lot easier to move things around. And then check out the uh, IO shields in the back, the IO covers. They also carry through the Gundam themed color right there. So if we look at the backside of the Helios, because it is a tempered glass panel, they have this extra tinted piece right here that is screwed down where you can run cables and stuff through there without it looking all ugly. You can see you got a cable channel that's already got the stuff like the front panel connectors and RGB headers and all that stuff sitting right there. So this should be a pretty easy chassis to, to cable manage and stuff. I'm kind of looking forward to this one. So what do you say we go ahead and just start building this and we see how it looks when we're done. Does this move? I got so much to figure out with this case. All right, let's build the ASUS Gundam Edition PC and let's see how it looks.
right, so here she is, all done and all put together. So yeah, some time actually elapsed between when we started this video and now because we realized we didn't have the AIO. But once that came in, we were able to build this. Starting with the front of the case, this is why I left the black fans in there, if you notice during the build. Typically, I'll take out case fans and I'll put in RGB fans of some sort because we want to let the RGB kind of have our theme. But because we knew we had this printed glass on the front, with the RX78 model here, we wanted to go ahead and let that be the accent color. So there is an LED strip on either side of this glass that shines across this print that's on here, which makes it light up. So when you first turn it on, it's got the RGB puke kind of a thing going on. We obviously set this to white right now because we wanted to accent the color that was on the pieces like the graphics card and the motherboard and the cooler and all that sort of stuff. But you can see this is why I did not put a light fans or RGB fans behind it because then it would take away from this overall effect right there. Um, but if we go ahead and come over here and look at the inside, you can see we've got some color sort of going on. I wish it'd given us a white fan for the back. Uh, the AIO came with these RGB fans that are attached to it and you can see the, R the AIO has this nice imprinting on the side that matches the militaristic theme of you know the Gundam. But I wish that black fan to me kind of clashes. So I feel like they should have given us another RGB fan for the rear to kind of pull it all together. But you can see now by having the white lighting on here, we were able to really kind of keep the color theme going that you can see with the lighting and the edges of the motherboard. Um, it all just really kind of comes together. I was still playing around with the RGB when it comes to the RAM in here. This is the Corsair Vengeance Pro. I'm just not sure if I like the blinking gold yet. There's not a lot of gold represented with Gundam. I mean, you can kind of see right here, this is an RX-78 on the screen. There's some gold right here with the exhaust vents and the chest piece right there. You got some gold keys. You can see, if you look at the bottom of the keyboard right here, see we've got some gold and kind of a Knight Rider effect sort of happening. So I wanted to bring a little bit more gold into the theme. But what happened was when I started trying to play around with the colors in the RGB, if you add blue to it or you add red or something, you're adding all of those colors to the white that's in the case and it really starts to sort of wash out some of the effects that are on the pieces. So I didn't want, to, to miss out on that or, or have that sort of disappear. Um, taking a look at the mouse here, you can see they literally carried the theme over into everything. So you've got the Space Force anchor kind of here. Uh, it's got the Gundam model. You can see you've got the yellow headlights. The mouse pad is actually very smooth. It's got some pretty traditional art right there when it comes to the uh, granddaddy. And then if we come over here and look at the keyboard, I'm actually really impressed with this. I'm not usually a fan of small keyboards, 75% or 70% or whatever this is. So you can see it has no uh, 10 key. I like 10 key, but I can still get used to this. We've obviously got a lighting theme as well as a keycap theme happening here that matches the Gundam. One thing I wanna point out though, and it is a uh, brushed aluminum or a, a, a brushed and blasted aluminum on here, which looks really nice. So it is a metal keyboard. The amount of anti-skid on the bottom is pretty ins insane. Like when it comes to trying to slide this thing, do you see me moving the whole table, trying to slide this? So it's not going to go moving around on you when you're when you're you know playing. It is a USB-C cable for this keyboard, and it doesn't have any additional USB hub or plug or anything on it. That's because the monitor here does have um, a, a hub built into it on the back. So this is a. 1440p, 144 hertz panel. But as you can see, it's obviously all, we showed you this on the box, but we didn't take it out. It's clearly got the entire Gundam theme going on with it. Uh, in fact, come look at the backside. It's a little bit dark because of the way the lighting is in our set right now, but they carried that Gundam theme all the way around to the back. You've got this guy right here, do a little peel for the EFSF or the Earth Federation Space Force. It's right here on the back. I mean, it's, there's a lot of, I don't know, prettiness here that you're not even gonna be able to see from the front, which sort of sucks. But it does have a uh, USB 3.0 hub built into there. Let's go ahead and talk about the headphones and the stand real quick, because this is actually pretty neat. So if you take a look at the headphones, they do have a white uh, light built into them. They're not RGB as far as I could tell, but they obviously carry the Gundam theme all the way through, blue ear cups. They do come with different ear pads as well. Um, they've got sort of a triangular shape to them. And it's funny, I'm pretty particular when it comes to headphones. These are really comfortable. Uh, I've never actually worn any of Asus ROG headphones before. I feel like the triangular shape obviously sort of matches the shape of your ear. So without it being round right here, it's not pushing on your cheek unnecessarily. It just follows the shape of your ear. They obviously swivel around. They are very cushy on top. And the amount of tension is just right to where it's not squeezing your head. But the ear cups are supple enough 
to where they're giving you a really nice uh, noise cancellation, obviously a passive noise cancellation without squeezing on your head too tight. You can turn the light off by flipping the switch right here. And you do have inline volume control, which as you can see right here, does tie right into Windows. So you're not just turning your head. Have you ever had headphones that had their own knob and the headphones are turned real, real far down and you're screwing around with your system trying to figure out why it's so quiet and then you realize, oh, I forgot to turn it up. Or vice versa, these are cranked and your system's cranked. Well, since this is all gonna be in sync, it obviously keeps it um, without being I guess too intrusive. Now, check this out. The microphone detaches. It doesn't swivel out of the way. I kind of wish that it did, but it doesn't swiv swivel out of the way. However, you can remove it. And if you want to just take this on the train or the subway or the bus, or whatever, and listen to your music, it is a USB-C headphone jack. So it's going to work with any USB-C device, uh, which is pretty much going to be any Android device, not Apple at this point. Maybe iPads. We'll have to test that because it gives you a USB, they give you a USB 3.0 to a USB-C adapter here. So this plugs into the base right here for the headphone jack, we'll talk about that in a second. But then you can plug this into your smart device that's USB-C and take them with you. And then when you come home, just plug it back into here. What I would do with this personally, if this were mine, is I might get a longer one of these or if it was long enough, mount it underneath the table to where it's like on the edge of your desk like that with tape or a bracket. That way then you can just plug your headphones into it directly and then unplug the headphones and hang them back when you're done. The headphones stand. Initially, we just thought that this was a basic headphone stand designed to match the theme. You can clearly see we've got this Gundam battle station going on right here, which as somebody that's not really into Gundam, but can appreciate the fan base and the lore and, and history behind it, especially since Nick's kind of educated me a little bit over the years, especially since we went to Taiwan and he found a giant Gundam store and he like lost his mind and I didn't see him for a couple hours pretty much. Uh, I, can, I can get behind the enthusiasm. But this isn't just a headphone stand. It's also a USB 3.0 hub. So you have two USB 3.0s on this side. You've got a three and a half millimeter jack in the front right here. It is powered. So if you have a device that you want to charge off of this, it does provide plenty of volts uh, to be able to charge. However, not only does it light up, and we forgot to take these off. Well, I should leave those on because that's acrylic and I don't want them to get scratched prematurely before we decide what we're going to do with all this. Not only is it a stand for your headphones, it is also an NFC charging device. So you can see now the lighting tells you, hey, we're charging. It's got a little blinking blue light. And then, you know, you can see the base kind of does this neat little thing to tell you like, hey, we're charging. See, it's done. Put it back. There we go, now it's charging again. So while you're sitting there playing your games or hanging out on your computer or whatever, instead of having to have a separate charger, you literally can let your headphone stand be your charger. Oh, and then if you guys remember that video I did where we built and painted that Gundam, even though there is an anti-sag bracket built into the system like we showed you, I thought it was kind of a fun little, you know, we always complain, don't put Funko Pops in your system and call it a theme. It's already themed. We just decided to take the Gundam that I painted and did like battle-worn Navy theme where it's all grayed out and then posed him to look like he's holding up the GPU. I think that's pretty cool looking. Anyway, guys, if you liked what you saw here today and you want to check out uh, all the Gundam theme stuff, make sure you guys head on over to our, uh, Asus ROG. I'll put links down below. You guys can check this stuff out. And then we got to figure out what we're going to do with this. I've probably never seen Nick nerd out like he has over this build. And to be honest, it's pretty cool. It's like a full theme without having to go modding anything. The only thing I ended up really modding, the power plugs for the PCI Express. One thing I'm not a fan of is the way they did these power cables is every single one of them was a daisy chain, which is basically you got a pigtail that comes off and then you can plug another you know, port into it. Well, that means I would have had to have daisy chained one and then have one plugged in with the daisy chain to nothing. No matter how I did it, it looked ugly. So the way I ended up doing this was actually cutting off the daisy chain on each one of these PCI Express, because they give you three cables with this, and then depinning every single one of these, and then cutting off the excess so that it's well within the clip or inside the plug and not hanging out a little bit, so that we could get three PCI Express cables, eight pin cables here without having any pigtails hang off of that. So anyway, there we go, guys. If you enjoyed this content and you like seeing this theme build come together, do me a favor, like this video and share it with your, your Gundam friends that are all crazy about Gundam, because I'll be honest, I didn't even know this collaborative effort existed, and I believe this isn't the first time they've done it, but I mean, you can carry this all the way down to the mouse pad, which is pretty awesome. 
So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Once again, links are down below if you want to learn more. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.